What's up everyone, Max Power here and welcome back to the arena. We've got some exciting content for you guys today. As you know, we've been making a couple deck profiles earlier in the year and I thought we'd actually get into something about the same but a little different. I've actually been dabbling a lot more with the Digimon card game and it's actually really fun. If you ask me, it's a lot more accessible. There's less borders to entry to get into the game, especially for new people. It's a lot less costly than some other TCGs, which sometimes you gotta shell out a lot of, a lot of money to make a good deck. And I'm here to show you that with just not as much money, you can make a really good competitive and fun deck. Today, we're going to be covering the Diaboromon line, which is actually pretty competitive. It might not be the number one deck in standard right now, but it is definitely still very useful. It's very fun. If you want to take it to your locals and maybe try to win some games, you definitely can. It is not lackluster at all. Guys, if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, I try to make some videos, anything on card game related, mainly Pokemon, Digimon, and what have you. So if you like the content, go ahead and let me know. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment here, subscribe, tell your friends about it, share the video, and let me know what you think about this and if you want to see other uh, deck profile videos as well. I do have some other ones coming around very soon, so I hope you support those and check them out. First, we're going to get started with the Digi Eggs, and I'll try to kind of explain a little bit as far as what the game tries to do and how the deck itself works, since I know maybe a lot of people might not be familiar with it. But with this, so basically, Digi Eggs are kind of like your starting point. You need Digi Eggs to be able to grow your Digimon into rookies, champions, ultimates, megas, and then some. They start from level two onwards. Those are known as stacks of Digimon that they grow and adapt and they get stronger and they help you win games. We got five copies of Sumamon here. Three of them are going to be from BT5, which is Battle of Omni. That's the box that we opened up on the channel at one point. This one's pretty good for consistency because it has an inheritable effect. I'll get into that a little more as far as what an inheritable effect is. But this one lets you draw a card every time you attack as long as you, you're using it with someone that has this in the stack, which is pretty nice. Helps you draw through your cards a little bit quicker. The second one here, this Sumamon is actually from BT2, uh, one of the earlier sets. I kind of like this one a little bit more because it actually, what it does is, while you have another Digimon in play with the same name as this one, uh, this Digimon, the first one gets 2000 plus DP. DP is like the attack power that it has. It just makes it stronger and stronger. And if you have two of them, they each get uh, 2,000 DP, which is pretty cool. So each de deck only runs about four to five Digi Eggs, and you can only run four copies of a single card at any time. Very similar to Pokemon, a little bit similar to Yu-Gi-Oh as well. I'll explain kind of the similarities and differences, which helps to kind of get people to pick up the game a little bit faster. So when I talk about life points and prize cards, you know what I mean? So those are all our level twos or babies. And now we're gonna get into the rookies or level threes, which are, some of them are gonna be our Caramon. This is from BT5 Battle of Omni as well. This is probably your first, if not second most important uh, rookie because it has a search engine built into it. When you hard play this, you get to reveal five cards from the top of your deck. Uh, and you get to add one with unidentified type in its, in its uh, traits and one Arata Sonata, which is the tamer for this deck, you get to add one of each into your hand. So this is pretty much, again, that consistency. You get the cards that you need, you get your tamer. And if you need Kurosarimon, which is the next level up, if you need Infermon, Diaboromon itself, you get to draw it out, play it much sooner. Now, while you could evolve your eggs into this one, I definitely suggest more of a hard play, meaning you play it directly as opposed to breeding it in the breeding area. Uh, which takes a turn, but you get to use this effect. If you evolve it back here, you don't get to use this effect. So on the contrary, the ones that you do want to digivolve into are these Caramon from EX1, which is the classic collection. <clears throat> and the reason you want to do that, these don't have any on-play effects, but what it does have is an inheritable. Again, when you digivolve over it, that next Digimon inherits or uses that effect, which is why it's called an inheritable. This one does for your turn, for each other Digimon that you have in play with the same name as this one, this one get, gets 1000 DP. So let's say you have one stack here of a Diaboromon or anything else, and you have a second one, this one gets that attack power as well, plus 1000. If you have a couple more, it just stacks up. Very, very useful. 
probably your second most important if not your first one dp is very important but you know you also want that consistency speaking of consistency you have two copies of caramon bt2 not a hard plate card but another one that you might want to evolve into and this one has the inheritable effect of when you play another digimon with the same name as this one you get to draw one card again just get through your cards quicker it's a 50 deck card for all digimon decks it's always 50 no more no less so it'll just help you get through those cards a lot quicker and play what you need and get your strategy build your board all that good stuff Rounding off our level 3s or our rookies are actually not in that evolution line. However, these are what's known as memory or floodgates. This is Chumon. Now, whenever you have at least one Chumon in play on your field, what it does is your opponent can't gain memory except with tamer effects. This is actually something that's very important because when you play uh, cards, you need to, they get expensed with memory, okay? So if you have zero memory, you're not going to be able to play any cards. So this is a memory gauge right here. I don't have one of those fancy mats that uh, have the counters on them. However, I'll just show you very briefly. When you start a game, uh, the memory counter for both players is always at zero until someone makes a move. Of course, someone will make a move because that's how you play the game. So, for example... Let's say I start at zero, okay? It's my turn first, and I hard play, or I just play directly a Chumon onto my field. I consume three memory. And whenever it goes past to the other side, let's say if I have any plus memory, I might have it on this side, and I use three, it goes to zero. And as I use memory progressively, it goes to the right. Whenever it goes to the right side after zero, it's your opponent's turn. Very simple, very quick. At first, it might seem a little clunky, but it's actually very easy to pick up, guys. Again, another barrier to entry, which is a lot easier than most other games. It's very user-friendly and new player-friendly as well. And also, if you check out your local card shops, a lot of people playing these games are very friendly as well. I've heard that uh, some players, and for example, Yu-Gi-Oh! and maybe Magic, they're not the, bold, the, the friendliest because they just kind of, uh, they expect you to be a master pro right away and not get anywhere in life. But anyway, onwards to our level fours, our champion level Digimon. And this is probably the number one most important one. Again, it's a 50 deck card, so a uh, deck, so we got to figure out how to fill it out. This is one of our first Kurosari Mons. This is the next level up to Kara. And what these do is that when you Digivolve, if you don't have an Arata Sonata Tamer in play, which is this one right here, I'll get into him a little bit later, you get to play him. From your hand without paying its memory cost. He costs three to play unless you hit it in security. I'll talk about security later. You get to play it for free and there it is. You'll see why later on it's very, very useful. This card is actually the engine that makes Dioboromon run and thrive. On top of the fact that it has a when did you evolving effect, this one has a second effect because it's uh, inheritable, making it very, very important. All your other Digimon with the same name as this one gain Rush. Rush is an ability that when you first play a card for the first time that turn, it gets what's known as Summoning Sickness, if you've heard of it. Basically, I can't attack on the, on the same turn that I play this card. However, if it gains Rush through Kurosarimon's ability as an Inheritable, I get to attack on the same turn that I play it. Just a light example, but that's what that means. We'll see a lot more of those effects as well, but this is basically the main first Kurosari you want to build with. Next one here is actually probably not the most important, but it's a nice one to have. This is the Kurosari one for EX1, uh, the classic collection. It has the inheritable of when uh, once per turn, when one of your other Digimon with the same name as this one is deleted, I get to unsuspend it. So let's say there's two Kurosari mods on the field. This one loses in battle, gets destroyed. This one, let's say it was suspended or maybe it attacked first, right? So let me do it again. This one attacks, it survives, right? Or wins the battle. This one attacks, it loses, gets destroyed. Now his effect kicks in as an inheritable, he gets to unsuspend. Now obviously I did it wrong because this is an inheritable effect. So Kurosarimon wouldn't be using it, it would be the next one up. But you get the idea. 
I'll probably go over a little more strategy with these uh, in a few ones. I've gotten a few more cards out. The next up here is going to be our third and final Kurosarimon. And the reason this one's so important is because this is actually your memory gainer. As an inheritable, when you play another Digimon with the same name as this one, you see a trend, right? Gain one memory. Okay? Again, it's an inheritable, so as you build your stacks, you got one stack, you got a second stack, a second Digimon building up to Mega. You get to gain your memory, you get to gain your rush, you get to gain so many abilities that before your opponent knows this, unless they're stripping your cards or your your your, your stacks, it's going to be hard to stop them. Last but not least, into our level fours, we have Mechanorimon, which is a very well-known blocker. Blockers are just that. Let's say somebody attacks me, right? They are going to hit my life points or my security. You start the game with five of them, okay? And once they've destroyed all five security and you have nothing left, they make one more attack and that's how you win the game. Unless you have a blocker. So, for example, Mechanorimon... Let's say someone attacks instead of going for a game, destroying a security, or maybe another Digimon, he takes the hit. That's it. And if it's uh, stronger in DP, this one has 6,000 and survives. If not, it gets deleted. Uh, very nice to have. The way the meta, the meta is set up right now, blockers are a little irrelevant, unfortunately. However, uh, that's not to say they're completely useless or anything like that. It's far from the case. Next up, we've got our level fives, which are one step closer to Diogoromon and almost there, just one step away. This one right here is one of the best, if not one of the more useful ones. And it's got two effects when it's Infermon on the field and your opponent's turn once per turn. When an opponent's Digimon Digivolves into a level five or higher Digimon, you gain one memory. This is very important when your opponent is building their stacks or they play hybrids, for example and they go into their level fives, which is the ultimate, then they might want to think twice because if they have, let's say right here, if they have zero memory, right, any other play they do is going to go to you. So I got my Infermon out, right? Somebody evolves to a level five. I gain one memory or they lose one. And guess what? It's my turn. Their turn ends right there. That's how it works. On top of that, the inheritable effect is... All your other Digimon with the same name get 2,000 DP. I'm telling you, if you stack a few of these with a few of your Kurosaris and everything else, if you get to make one, two, maybe three Deer Boromon, it's very likely you're going to win the game. Especially if you've got your Arata Sonata Tamers out as well. Next up is going to be our second but not last Infermon. This one is good because when this Digimon digivolves into Deer Boromon, the memory cost is actually reduced by one. So whatever the cost is, usually it's between three memory or four memory to go into your level six, it's gonna be one less. So that's very useful, very good because it makes it you know a lot more efficient, a bit easier for you to run your strategy, to add more plays, stuff like that. So you're able to do it more efficiently, okay? So he's useful because of that. And we actually have one more Infermon. The reason this one's so useful, but I only play one of it, is because <coughs> uh, if you evolve it from Karamon, you actually get to Warp Digivolve, meaning you get to skip your level 4 <coughs> or your Karamon. You can Digivolve into this one in your hand for a memory cost of 4. So it's a little more of an expensive cost, but overall it's cheaper because you're warping to it. Now, mind you, if you do so... You're passing up whatever ability your four has, like for example, being able to play your erratas if you have none, reducing the memory cost, and also giving your all your other uh, Digimon rush if you don't already have it. But if not, go ahead and play him down. If he's the only level five that you have and you're just trying to build your stacks, that's what you do. You, the whole point is to play your cards, draw your cards, and Digivolve so you can get to your uh, main boss and just help you win the game. The next up is what's known as a vanilla card. For those of you that play Yu-Gi-Oh! Basically, these cards have no effect. It's a level 5 War of Monzaemon, But it actually has a very cheap cost to Digivolve with only 2 into a level 5. Very efficient. 
the whole point is for not for him to sit there because it's a level you know it only has 6000 dp it's for you to get to your Diaboromon sooner faster get your strategy going so all that does is to make your evolutions a little bit cheaper and more accessible next up is the i would say man of the hour it's a digimon it's a monster or whatever it's the main protagonist or antagonist or what's the word uh anti-hero of this deck right here it's dear boromon this is probably the best one today from ex1 classic collection the reason this one's so good is that if this is one of your cards in security your opponent attacks you they hit it in security it has a security effect at the end of battle you may play one digimon one dear boromon token without paying its memory costs tokens are very good because it acts as another body on the board another Digimon, a weaker version of Diaboromon, but because it gets to spread out. The whole point of this deck specifically is to make tokens, which it kind of spreads like a virus because that's if you guys watch the Diaboromon movie, that's how it works. Flood the board so that when you get enough bodies, you can attack and win the game fairly easily if you get to that point. Additionally, it has a second effect where if you go to your opponent's turn and you have at least one of these, all your Diaboromon gain blocker could be your regular diaboros your token diaboros everybody everybody gets blocker and it just makes things a lot more difficult for your opponent when you're talking about play cost if you hard play it if you just play it straight out of your hand with no evolution it costs 12 memory very costly as you can do the math you can only have a max of 10 in any turn and that depends on what your opponent plays to give you or give back that memory what you want to do instead is digivolve into it and if you do it from that uh inframon that reduces the cost instead of playing it for three you play it for two and that means you get a lot more resources to make a lot more moves make things a lot more easier a lot easier for you grammatical errors there guys next up we got two more of uh diaboromon this is actually from battle of omni again bt5 this one's cool it's not the best one but it's a good second fiddle because when you digivolve you get to play another digimon Diaboromon token. Sorry, I keep butchering that. This is good because if you hard play, not hard play, but if you did evolve, you get to produce a token. You got at least two bodies on the field. If this is your second or third one, that means more bodies. It's going to be more of a, uh, a nuisance for your opponent. It's going to be harder for them to get around, especially if you got your Diaboromon blocker out. So you've got a bunch of tanks on your field. Last but not least, and actually, I forgot to mention, but <clears throat> there's one more Diaboromon. This is from BT2. And this is the first one that came out. It's not the best one because it's got the higher cost to play Digivolve and the lowest DP. But it's still useful because every time you attack, you get to, again, play another token. Likewise, if this Diaboromon gets deleted in battle, uh, you get to delete one of your other tokens to prevent this from getting deleted. It stays on the field. You could probably swap this out um, for the promo version of Diaboromon, which the whole point of that is that you get an extra attack uh, depending on the number of Diaboromon you have in play. So let's say if you have three tokens, they're all Diaboro, and then you have your one promo, you get to swing for one, two, three, four security checks if your opponent has that many. If not, you basically win the game or get your attacks in that you need. Now, plus security doesn't mean extra attacks on your opponent, but it does mean if they have four security and you attack four times, unless it's strong enough to beat your Diaboromon by DP, you get to get rid of all four of them. So that's taking your prize cards, knocking their life points, what have you. And actually, now this is the last one to round off our uh, Digimon. This is the level seven, the, the Ultra, or what have you. As we were mentioning before we got interrupted, <laughs> it's all good. But yes, this is our level 7 Armageddon Mon. Uh, you don't need him to be in the deck necessarily. It is a Diaboromon deck. However, this is kind of like your counterpart to Omnimon. A lot of decks want to play Omnimon because he's like the best one in the game. And it's kind of true. It's your highest level. It's your Mega Mega or what some video games call Ultra or whatnot. <clears throat> Basically the highest level any Digimon can obtain. Um, and as you can see, it has the highest play cost, has the highest DP, 15,000, and you're very, very, very strong. 
This one you can digivolve into from your Devora one, for example. You get to play it, okay? And you can digivolve for three, or <clears throat> for example, what I like to do, let's say you attack, and because you attack, you're suspended, you can't do anything else, you can delete him through Armageddon Mon's effect. And by doing so, when you when playing this card from your hand, you may delete one of your Diobormon to reduce this card's play cost by 12. So essentially the same thing as if you would have Digivolved straight into it. However, now you gain this nifty ability called Rush, meaning you can attack the same turn it comes into play, just like the Kurosarimon that provided. And additionally, whenever you have another, uh, your opponent Digivolves anything into a level 7, their effects don't activate. Their when digivolving effects do not activate. So this is a hard counter to Omnimon if you get to it first. But however, if you play into an Omnimon and they digivolve first and you're still trying to set up your board, it's kind of an auto loss. Also, if you're playing blue hybrids because they kind of strip down your sources, meaning they get rid of all your inheritable effects and you just have an empty shell while you're trying to play. So it's really, really cool. We're almost done here, but now we're going to get into what I was mentioning is the heart and soul of this deck, which is Arata Sonata. These are your Tamer cards. I forgot to mention, but Digimon has three different types of uh, cards, which is your Digimon, your Tamers, which are these. They usually have cool effects. Usually when you attack it in security, it activates. Play this card without paying its memory cost, so you got a free play right there. And then whatever the effects are, you get to reap the benefits. But the reason this is so important, and of course I'm showing off the pre-release stamp, this is some bling. Got it off a trade from my friend Brito, thank you very much. At the start of your turn, when this card's on your field and it stays on your field, if a Digimon card with unidentified type and its type is in your trash, which is all the Diaborum online, you gain one memory. Very important because if you have two, three, four Aratas, like all four of these at once, that means every turn you gain, for memory. Whenever they pass up, let's say your opponent makes a play, they give you one memory because they're trying to choke you or trying to limit the memory that you use. Joke's on them because you got your four erratas, you're going to go to five memory. That's a lot. Meaning you can make a lot more plays at their expense or thanks to your errata. Its second effect, when one of your Digimon Digivolves into Diaboromon, you may suspend this tamer to play one Diaboromon token. You see the theme? This is the whole point of the deck. The more Aratas you have, the more Diaboromon you have that play their own effects, the more tokens you're going to get, the bigger your side of the field is going to be, the more likely it is you're going to win the game. So that's point blank what it is. If you have one, you're pretty good. If you got two, you're in better shape. If you got three, you're probably about to win unless you're really 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 behind by the time it comes out which it's very possible this deck is one of the slower ones it does take a while to build but sometimes it's not that slow sometimes you just build if your opponent bricks or they don't have what they need well tough luck but you get to take advantage our last tamers which are these two analog youth for a play cost of two it's pretty useful because you get to reveal the top three cards of your deck Add one Digimon card among them to your hand. The rest you trash or have to get rid of, but it's very useful because, for example, if you're trying to search for your next level up, maybe the Oboromon, maybe in your Armageddonmon, you get to just bring it out. You search for them, you bring it out, and then you just go ahead and that's the next step up you need to Digivolve, boom, you got it going. Very useful for that. I think two is good enough. You don't need three, you don't need four copies in this deck. One, maybe two. And also, when one of your level five or higher Digimon with Div Digivolution cards is deleted, you may suspend this tamer, tilt it sideways. If you do, you gain one memory, okay? And you get to hatch a Digi Egg card into an empty space in your breeding area. So the way that works is, if you don't already have a Digi Egg, right? Like this one on here, then you get to hatch or play one every turn when you start you draw a card you hatch or bring out into your field whatever's in your breeding area this is your breeding area uh, and then you get to make your plays you get to do whatever you want attack stuff like that 
but this is only once per turn. So if you delete anything here, you have an extra space, you got analog youth out. I keep getting rid of my cards. If you've got analog youth out, it gets deleted. If you happen to have an Inframon, the Aboromon, Armageddon mod, it gets deleted. You get to gain a memory. You hatch a new egg, and then you keep it going. This is not essential for the strategy or for this deck to work. It's just a nice little tech card to have in. Tech cards, you know, are not absolutely necessary, but they help, right? So second to last, we've got three more cards. Parabolic Junk is actually one of the newer cards here. This is from BT6 Double Diamond. If you guys hear me talk about it, I've opened some packs before. Um, it had been a while before I, I had refreshed my deck, so I thought to add this. I saw some people using it. Main effect is for zero cost, free. One of your Digimon gains on deletion, just like it says, gain two memory until the end of your opponent's next turn. So it's very useful. Let's say if you're going to attack with something that's weak, like this Karamon, or you know that if it's your opponent's turn, you know that this Karamon's going to be attacked because it's suspended. You get to free play this Parabolic Junk, say that, hey, you're going to attack my Karamon, or I can, you know, attack with it and get deleted. But if it does, I gain two memory. Boom. That's all there is to it. For free, if it gets hit in security, boom. Add this card to your hand. So that means you get to play next turn. So sometimes you need it to either turn the tide in your favor, make it from your opponent's turn to your turn. Maybe they got zero. They think, oh, I'm good. You just got two memory plus your erratas. You get to have three, four, five, six, seven memory. And you are rolling if you do it that way. Okay. Second to last. Now we're going to have an option card that actually helps to disrupt. And first I'm going to show off the Catastrophe Cannon. This is the Aboromon Special Attack, if you guys know. Main effect is trigger digi the Digivolve 2. Meaning if they have whatever they have on the field, your opponent. If they have a level 4, it gets destroyed. Because it has to go down to 3, go down to 2. Anything out of two can't be in the battle area in the main, only in the raising. It gets destroyed. It's like a little board wipe. Also, if you have a Digimon, a Diaboromon in play, you get to play another Diaboromon token. You see how this is happening, right? And again, if you hit this card in security, activate this card's main effect, it is a disruption that your opponent was not expecting. Speaking of disruption, we got the last card in this deck, Ultimate Flare. For a cost of 8, it is uh, Armageddon on special attack, but it does similar. It de-digivolves 3. 3. This is very disruptive. Especially if your opponent is rocking their level 7, their level 6, they think they're up. Uh-uh. You just turn the tide on them. And the game just might be in your favor at that time. Very, very useful. Very helpful. Then, delete all your opponent's Digimon and play with a cost of 3 or less. So you're, that's a board wipe right there, guys. If you didn't know what a board wipe was, there you go. You know, you just took advantage. Swing with your Diaboros. You can swing with a Caramon. Whatever. Win the game. That's how you do it, guys. So, I know this is a bit of a longer video, but this is very exciting. Just kind of explain the strategy. Explain how the deck works. How the game works a little bit. I know I wasn't intensive in all the details. But, um, I'll kind of talk a little bit more through it in other videos. Maybe I just make a how to play soon. I'm not that good, so I didn't think I would just do that. I'll just make a deck profile. And those that follow me, thank you very much. I uh, hope this made some sense to you. If not, uh, we can talk about it, of course, later on. Thank you so much for the support. Like the video. Let me know what you guys thought. Uh, share with your friends. And until next time, have a good one, guys. Yeah.